I've got the TLC 200 Pro HDR time-lapse video camera here, and yes, that's a very long title, but nonetheless, I got through it, and now we're moving on. Stuff we like. I'm a virgin when it comes to time-lapse video cameras, meaning that this is my very first time. It got me excited, basically because you can go ahead, record hours worth of video all in one sitting, and not have to worry about it. You literally just like start recording and you walk away. Pretty nifty, right? So let's talk about this bad boy. This is a camera itself, and it's very sleek and almost looks like a telescope by many means, but at the same time, it's so lightweight that you would almost be a little bit worried of the wind blowing it over. That's how crazy crazy this thing is. You do see that it has a very nice flat base to it, so it should be pretty sturdy if you go ahead and sit it on any sort of surface. At the same time, there is a mounting port for it on a tripod right there, so of course it will be secure no matter where it is if it's on a tripod. One more thing to note about the bottom is that we can go ahead and open it all up and you'll get all of the four AA batteries that go right in there. They are included within this package itself. One thing that's not included, but it does have the ability to is for it to be charged via a five volt DC power that you can go ahead and plug in on the side, but it just doesn't come with the cord, so fuck you. Additionally, you'll notice right here is a micro USB port that you can go ahead and use to transfer files from the SD card onto your computer itself or you can use this camera as a web camera because watching yourself in a web camera format that just makes you bounce all over the place is really fun. So talking about the SD card, it's right over here, wow. Now included within the package itself, let's take it out, is a four gigabyte SD card. So, you know, it'll get the job done for a couple hours, but you'll definitely want to go and get a much larger one if you do want to record for truly hours on end, and it can work all the way up to a 32 gigabyte SD card. Please note that there is no built-in microphone, nor is there a microphone port here, so it's just gonna be video that you're capturing. The lens itself comes with the cap, so you can go ahead, put that on there. Additionally, though, you can even change this lens with other lenses if you'd like to. This lens that's built in is 120 degrees, so you've got a very wide angle lens that'll be able to capture a lot of stuff. But let's flip this sucker over to the back side and you'll notice here that it is very simple in design and should be very easy to use. So let's go ahead and show you how you turn it on by just moving that over to the right and then move it to the left to turn it off. This OK button will allow you to go ahead, start a recording as well as to stop a recording. And at the same time, there is the menu icon as well as time. And so all of that together should be very easy to use and it is, but there are some hiccups here. The main thing being that when you go ahead and press record, the screen is basically going to shut off within a couple seconds of the recording. So, well, how do you turn the screen back on? Well, there kind of isn't a way to do that. That's wonderful, isn't it? You have to literally stop the recording that you're doing right now in order for the screen to turn back on. And that's okay to some extent, but at the same time, that's kind of shitty because I'd always like to be able to glance at to make sure that the lighting is okay still as time passes throughout the day, obviously. I don't know if you can really tell us at home, but the screen itself is tinier than a Game Boy screen. You probably haven't played a Game Boy in a very long time, but just imagine downsizing that screen and you've got the screen size right here. This thing is not only a small screen, but it's obviously not a touch screen. And additionally, it's kind of blurry and not all that clear. There's also a delay between what the camera sees as well as what you see right here on the video screen. So it is very much so jarring, but nonetheless, you'll be able to get the job done of kind of just estimating what it is that you truly are shooting. One more thing that's a little sour with this is that I'm sure the technology itself that they used here is just not the latest and greatest. Basically, it does take several seconds for for the video to start recording after you press OK, as well as to stop recording after you press OK. And it comes to the point where it's like, is this thing even listening to me? Sometimes I do literally, when I want to stop recording, I just shut off the camera altogether because I'm like, the screen's not turning on and I have no idea what exactly to do, so I'll just stop recording by pressing the off button.
If this thing was 100 bucks, then I'd be okay with all of its downsides, but this thing costs 400, and you're like, wait a minute, that's kind of crazy that it costs that much money. I mean, I at least expect a little bit more out of my technology when I'm spending 400 bucks than what you get out of here, just because, again, it's a little bit not all that responsive. It does at least still get the job done of capturing the video in the first place, but it has those sort of frustrating moments where you just don't know what exactly it's doing. So with that in mind, I'd say potentially this is a camera for you if you're looking for time-lapse video. Otherwise, you might just want to wait until they introduce the 300 or something like that that has the much more improved technology, at least that we hope increasing a number count provides.